should we only celebrate success or should we also celebrate failure? Maybe we should celebrate both, party all the time. Well, I have the answer for you. Here is a nice diagram that shows you exactly what you should celebrate. I'm sure that all of you know many good practices, the things that usually work. For example, I often use my smartphone as a timer when I'm speaking at conferences, so I know how much time I have left. But even good practices can fail sometimes, like that time when the alarm of my smartphone went off during my keynote, loudly and just a bit too early. We also know some bad practices. I prefer to call them mistakes because we often don't do them intentionally. They are the things that won't work, usually. For example, I do not use someone else's computer when I speak at an event. I've had so many problems with missing fonts, faulty USB sticks, PowerPoint versions that were installed in the 19th century. I don't do that anymore. Admittedly, sometimes even mistakes can work. Like that one time when my computer died 10 minutes into my talk. I was quite happy to use someone else's system then. And then there are the experiments. We run experiments when we don't know if the behaviors are going to be successful or not. That's the whole point of running an experiment. For example, I have done experiments using no slides, flip charts, getting the audience to do silly things, and I've even experimented with singing on stage. It turns out that learning is optimal when we run experiments, when there's a 50-50 chance of succeeding or failing. We don't learn anything when we just repeat good practices or repeat the same mistakes. Yes, we learn when a good practice fails or a bad practice succeeds, surprise, but neither happens that often. Some people say, we should celebrate failure, but celebrating failure would include celebrating the failures that come from mistakes. Why would we celebrate those? That makes no sense. Celebrating success seems more sensible, particularly when we focus on reinforcing good practices. The danger, however, when you only focus on success is that you send everyone in the direction of repeatable behaviors. When people only get compliments for achieving something, they will prefer to follow only good practices. Why run a risk with an experiment? You might fail. But creative organizations need to learn all the time. Interestingly enough, networks are great at innovation, running experiments. Systems theory suggests that creativity comes from networks operating at the edge of chaos. Hierarchies are greater repetition, doing the same thing endlessly. Creative organizations require both networks and hierarchies. The informal network is responsible for exploration, coming up with innovative ideas. Many of them won't work, but that's fine. The ideas that do work, they should be passed on to the hierarchy. The hierarchy is responsible for exploitation, optimizing the ideas that work. A small network of very smart people invented the first iPhone. A hierarchy of thousands of workers produced the other 700 million copies. Yes, I'm Christoph Baun. I'm a facilitator for Management 3.0 from Germany. And uh, um, when I um, teach the module um, about competency development, I love to use the celebration grid because it helps me and the, and the participants um, to very nicely visualize how you can learn from doing experimentations and find out that experiments actually are um, the best way to learn new things, whether you fail or whether you succeed, no matter, you can always learn from it and therefore you can always celebrate the learning that you get there. That's why I really um, appreciate it. It's a very nice visualization of, um, um, of the areas where you really learn very well. As you can see, this diagram makes it very easy to discuss behaviors versus outcomes and success versus failure. It's a great tool for retrospectives and other kinds of team evaluations. The best thing is, it has experiments right in the middle, reminding everyone that that's what they should be focusing on. 
So, what should you celebrate? By all means, celebrate your successes. I do so as well. However, more importantly, celebrate your experiments and the things you've learned from them, even when you fail.